We take a few months break, come back, and everything has changed. Look at some of these tools we have at our disposal now to manipulate our videos and photos. In this video, I'm going to show you some AI tools to not only completely transform your aerial photos, put you in places you could never have dreamt you could get to. Not only that, we're going to show you how to animate those photos, add some motion to that still image. You're not going to want to miss this. Stuart Caddo here, how have you been? It's been a while, life gets in the way sometimes, but we have a whole bunch of stuff that we want to bring your attention to on the channel. This is the first of a two-part series. We're going to talk about photo manipulation here, but then in the next video, we're going to talk about how to incorporate that into your video work. We can now do Hollywood style image manipulation and VFX. It's very, very cool. The principles are very, very old. It's the same principles that allow us to get rid of all that little muddle of hard drives on the desk here. We're incorporating a static element into the image with our video. Anyway, that's for the next tutorial, so stay tuned for that. On this one, we'll just take you through a few examples of how to create these crazy images with just a few clicks. Here's a fairly typical drone selfie I took up in the mountains of Spain. The views were amazing, the photo doesn't really reflect that. Now you need Photoshop to get access to this generative fill capability. 10 pounds or dollars a month for Photoshop and Lightroom from Adobe. Go up to the rectangular marquee tool up here and select the bit of the image that you want to keep. It helps if you click on it. There we go. Select the bit that you want to keep. If we hit the invert selection button, then we get the outer part of the frame that we are going to replace. Up pops the generative fill dialog box. Let's type in craggy mountains and cliffs. I actually don't know what's going to come up here because one interesting drawback you could say of generative fill at the moment is it's not repeatable. If I come back to this photo tomorrow and try and do it again, I will get different results. Anyway, Join me and let's have a look and see what we get. So hit the generate button and wait for your three options to appear. It normally takes about 10, 20 seconds. <laughs> I've been doing this for weeks and it gets me every single time. Oh my goodness, that is awesome. Let's look at the second one that it's generated. I, I think that might be even better to be honest with you. The lighting is a little bit less harsh on these rocks. Look at the way the grass just feeds through from the original part of the image. This is absolutely insane. Third one, also fantastic. The power lines are a bit messed up, but we could fix that if we wanted to. Just so you know, if you don't like any of the three results, you can hit generate again. So let's do just that. Hit generate again and see what we get. <laughs> it's too good. Right. Oh, oh, look at that one. Oh my goodness. Now, of course, you can go in and alter the colors of these and manipulate it a bit further if you wish, if you're so inclined. If I haven't already blown your mind, then what I'm going to show you now is going to 100% do just that. We're going to do generative expand, make the frame a lot bigger with the click of a button. Tap C for the crop tool and then drag your frame to any size you want it to be. In this instance, you still get a dialog box that you can type things into, but you don't have to. Here for the generative expand, tap the generate button, give it time to work its magic, and let's see what we get. I don't know what that little thing at the top is, but look at what is done here. That is absolutely insane. Let's see what number two looks like. Wow. And number three. Oh my God. Goodness. Just to refresh your memory, to show you the original part, the only part of this shot that is real, let's just switch off the generative expand, switch off the generative fill. That's the original image. All of that is artificially generated. Before we get to animating this still photo with another AI tool, I've got a few tips to help you get the most out of your generative fill. First of all, if something does appear that you don't want in the shot, so in the first iteration, of this generative expand. We've got some debris or something up there. I don't know what it is. Select the marquee tool again, put a box around that, hit generative fill and just generate 
it will take the surrounding pixels and, and get rid of that in some way, shape or form. Beautiful, look at that, before, after. In terms of maximizing the resolution of your generative fill, when we're zoomed in here, you can see that the original image is very sharp and the generative fill is soft. That's because Adobe currently restricts the generative filled portions to around 1000 pixels by 1000 pixels a square. Now we've generated way more pixels than that when we expanded this image. To get around that, you can select a little box at a time, let's say 1000 by 1000 pixels, generate that box, then do the process again and work your way all around the image. It's just a lot slower. So for the sake of this example, we just did it in a one but it will give you a better result. And actually, if we scroll up here on this image, and let's look at the bit of the image that we just repaired when we got rid of that uh, kind of debris at the top there, you can see that the repair, because it was a small repair, is actually a lot sharper than the surrounding pixels here. Landscape components work really, really well, and I think that's why it's so great for these kind of drone photos. Let me give you a couple of examples. This section of the image is a bit messed up anyway, so let's select this whole thing. <laughs> oh my goodness, look at that! Right, it's brilliant! Right, let's look at the third, second one, pretty, Pretty great. The third one. Oh, wow. Right, let's just go with the first one. I think it looks the most realistic and oh, it's, oh, it's too much for my brain to handle. Next up, lakes are quite good. Watery reflections are quite good. So let's just chuck a massive lake in here at the bottom of this image and see what we get. Let's just select the whole bottom of this image and put lake with mirror reflection generate oh, look at look at the reflection look at the reflection and look at the way it's seamlessly integrated into the image with a little beachy type area there let's go to the second one see what that one looks like also good and that one's look at look at Look at the reflection of the rocks. If you go to layapix.com, you can animate your still images. So let's upload the one that we created today. Give a little bit of time to process and create a depth image and animation. And let's see what we get. Not bad at all, mindful that the starting point is just a still image, an AI generated still image, I hasten to add. There's a depth map in there so there's some kind of sense of the layers in that image and those layers move at different speeds and that's what creates that parallax effect when you move or rotate a camera. So that's what the software here is trying to replicate and I would say doing a pretty good job of. You can vary the animation style. This is a horizontal movement that we've got at the moment. Here's an up and down vertical movement. It's impressive stuff. If you really pixel peep, you can see a little bit of artifacting going on around my shoulders there, but we're in the infancy of this technology and I think it's very exciting to embrace it early on because it's clearly not going anywhere and we can use it to complement the work that we are already creating. In the next video, we're going to use this technique to create matte paintings that we will incorporate with our video footage to create out of this world environments that A, are not achievable for you and I as regular content creators or filmmakers because we just can't get to those kind of locations or B, they don't exist because we live in a world now where pretty much everything we watch on television has been modified with some form of visual effects. The exciting thing is that is now available to you and I as the kind of regular content creator and I think this is a very exciting world. Is this real photography? Whatever, that's another conversation. We live in a world where we're dealing with image generation and image manipulation and now you and I can do it better than we could do a few months ago when these tools were not available. It's exciting so stay tuned for that video. In the meantime do check out the links in the description for everything we talked about in this video and we will see you next time.